Okay, so we're going to look through a couple of examples of the uh, law of sines and law of cosines to um, solve uh, triangles that are uh, not right triangles. Um, so w when we have something that's not a right triangle, uh, I don't have a right angle, which means my six trig functions won't work like we normally use them, like sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. That doesn't work. That only uh, refers to um, right triangles. We also can't use the uh, Pythagorean theorem um, because that only works for right triangles. Um, however, we do have the law of sines and cosines that will work. Um, for the law of sines, if I know an angle and then a side and then an angle, or I know a side, a side, and an angle, um, then I will use the uh, law of sines. Uh, if I know a side, an angle, and a side, I'd use the law of cosines, or if I know all three sides, I'd use the law of, uh, of cosines. The side-side angle is what we call the ambiguous case, and that's what we're going to look at. There's three possibilities that we can, we can have with the side-side angle case. Um, there could be no triangle solution, there could be one triangle solution, or it's possible to have a um, uh, second triangle uh, solution. So the check for that is you'll be given an angle, so let's say we know that angle A is 41 degrees. Then um, I would solve, for example, I'd find angle B. Now I take angle B and I find the supplement of that. So that's to subtract B from 180 degrees. So whatever that is, if I add that to angle A, which is 41 degrees, and if that happens to be less than 180, then I have room for a second triangle solution. If it's greater than 180, then there, there isn't room for, or equal to uh, 180, there, there isn't room for a second uh, triangle solution there. Um, so we're going to look mostly at the ambiguous case and kind of explore what's going on with that, and then we'll do a couple examples of the law of cosines. So let's start out, and they're just going to ask us to solve the triangle, which means we want to find all the angles and all the sides. And uh, they don't tell us it's a right triangle, so we, can, we can't make that assumption. And they tell us that angle A is 41 degrees, uh, side A is going to be 5, and then... Uh, side B is going to be 11. So we'll go ahead and just draw a generic uh, triangle and put that that information in. And then we'll use the uh, law of sines to, to find something here. Okay. So uh, looking at what I got, I know angle A and side A. So I definitely want to use sine of A over A. Now do I want to have sine of A over A equal sine of B over B or sine of C over C? It just depends on what information I'm given. Because I don't know what angle C is or side C is, I probably don't want to use sine of C over C. So I probably want to use sine of B over B because I know that the side B is 11. So that's what we're going to do. So sine of A is 41 degrees. Sine of 41 degrees over 5 is equal to uh, the sine of B over 11. So what we're going to do is we're going to isolate the sine of B, so we're going to multiply both sides by 11. So we have 11 sine of 41 degrees all over 5, and that's going to be equal to sine of B. To undo the sine, we have to take the arc sine of both sides. So we're going to go ahead and take the arc sine of both sides, and this arc sine and sine will undo each other. And when I plug this into my calculator, I, I got to make sure that I'm in degrees. Um, it's going to tell me a domain error, okay? Which means um, I don't have a triangle. So this is this is no solution, okay? And what my triangle probably looks like is it looks something like what I got over here, where I don't quite have enough length on A on side A for a for a complete triangle, so that's a no triangle solution. Okay. Um, now let's look at another example. So this is going to be another ambiguous case. So they tell us that angle A is 41 degrees, uh, side A is 12, and side B is 11. So we'll just go ahead and draw ourselves a, a triangle here again and put in the information that we know.
And then since I kind of have the same information that I know as the last time, I'm going to use sine of A over A equals sine of B over B, and we're going to solve it in a very similar situation that I solved uh, the last one. Uh, we're going to clear the fractions, so we're going to multiply both sides by 11, and then we're going to take the arc sine of both sides. So we'll take that arc sine of both sides. And the arc sine and the sine will undo each other, so that will isolate that B for us. So we'll find that angle B. So I have B is approximately 37 degrees. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check for a second triangle. So I'm going to find the supplement of angle B, which means I'm going to subtract that from 180 degrees. And then I'm going to add 41 to that and see if that exceeds 180 or not. So 180 degrees minus 37, um, that's equal to 143, and that's the supplement. And then if I add 41 degrees to that, uh, I'm going to get 184. And that's bigger than 180, so that means that there is no uh, second triangle. So I just got to finish solving up, solving for the rest of uh, uh, that that triangle there. So I need to find uh, angle C and angle sum of triangles 180. So we'll do C minus angle A minus angle B, and that's going to give us um, 102 degrees as angle C. So then we say sine of 102 divided by C is equal to sine of 41 over uh, 12. Now since I've done some rounding, I kind of want to use the sine of A over A. So what we can do here is um, solve for C. So if I take the reciprocals of both sides, I'll have C over the sine of 102 is equal to 12 over sine of 41. And then I would just multiply both sides by sine of 102 to clear the fraction. And so I got uh, side C is equal to 12 sine of 102 over the sine of 41 degrees, and that's about 18. And uh, that's my one triangle solution. And let's go ahead and uh, look at one more here using just the law of sines. Okay, so it's going to be a very similar setup. Uh, we're just going to change the... Uh, angle B, not angle B, we're going to change side B and I think we're going to make it like 10 or something like that. Or A is going to be 10 and B is going to be 11. So it's going to be same setup, side side angle. And this time we're going to, same, same as the last, last two, sine of A over A is equal to sine of B over B. And we'll multiply by 11 and to clear the fraction, and then we'll take the arc sine of both sides to undo the sine on the B. Okay, it's so the arc sine of 11 sine of 41 over 10. That's going to be B. So B is going to be approximately um, 46.2 degrees. So now what we're going to do is we're going to check for a second triangle. So we're going to take the supplement of 46.2, which means we're going to subtract it from 180 degrees. And that gives 133.8. Add the giving angle that we started, which was 41. And we have 174.8, which means there's room for a second triangle. So what is that B? That B is going to be the supplement of 133.8. Now we're going to solve both these triangles very similarly. First we're going to find angle C, which is going to be 180 minus angle A minus angle B. So angle C is going to be 92.8 degrees. And then we'll do the sine of A over A is equal to the sine of C over C. Okay, Solving that for C. Um, we can take the reciprocals and then multiply by sine of 92.8 to clear the fraction. And we get side C is approximately 15.2. Now we solve the other triangle, 
by doing 180 minus angle A minus angle B and uh, that gives us a small angle of 6.2 degrees. So now we'll use our law of sines, sine of 41 over 10 is equal to sine of 6.2 over C. We'll take the reciprocals and then multiply by sine of 6.2 and um, that's going to find us that side C. Okay, And that'll be a small, small side of 1.6. So what we got going on here is um, we might have something like this and we might have something like this as our, um, as our possible uh, triangles here where this um, angle C could be very large or, or, or very small. So there's, there's two possibilities with, with this here. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, look at one more here, or two more. We're going to look at uh, using that law of uh, uh, cosines here. Okay, so I'm going to use the law of cosines if I have a uh, side angle side or a side side side. So here I have uh, two sides and then the angle in between it. So that's a side angle side. So go ahead and put that information in. Okay, so this is side angle side, so I want to use the law of cosines to do this one. So we're going to use the one with uh, B because I have angle B. So you have B squared is equal to A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine of B. So we're just going to plug in all that information that we have and then uh, put it all into our calculator and take the square root of that. Okay. So you have 10 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 10 times 8, cosine of 87. So, and then we'll just throw the, that in and take the square root of it. And we get B is about 12.5. Um, now in class, I may have um, done the law of cosines again. Um, if I can use the law of sines, it's a little bit quicker and uh, less likely to make some mistakes. So let's go ahead and go ahead and do the law of sines now. So sine of A over 10 is going to be equal to the sine of 87 over 12.5. Now, since I've done a little bit of rounding with, with uh, side B, I'll have a little bit of, a, of an error. So what we'll do is multiply both sides by 10 and then take the arc sine to undo the sine. So we have 10 uh, sine of 87 over 12.5, and then we took the arc sine of that. And that's going to find us that angle A. So we get angle A is about... Uh, 53 degrees. Okay, so all we're missing here is uh, angle C, so take 180 minus 87 minus 53. So angle C is about 40 degrees. Okay. All right, we're going to do one more. We're going to look at what happens when I have uh, three sides. Okay, so what happens when I know all three sides? So this time, side A is 8, side B is 4, and side C is uh, 11. So we're going to go ahead and do our triangle, A, B, C. So 8, 4, and 11. And it doesn't matter which one I use because I don't know any of the angles, so I'm just going to do one of them, so I'm going to do A. So A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine of A. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to solve this generically. So I'm going to subtract b squared and subtract c squared and divide by negative 2bc. Then what I would have left is the cosine of a. So to get the a out of the cosine, I would take the arc cosine. So we're going to take the arc cosine of all of that mess, and that's going to equal a. Okay, so a is going to be equal to the arc cosine. of a, uh, 8 squared minus 4 squared minus 11 squared divided by negative 2 times 4 times 11. And then that's all in the arc sign. So if I want to put this in the calculator, it would look like this. Arc, um, excuse me, arc cosine 
parentheses for the arc cosine, parentheses for the numerator, close parentheses for the numerator, divided by open parentheses for the denominator, close parentheses for the denominator, and then close parentheses for the arc cosine. So you got to be a little bit careful there when you're putting in your calculator. So that's how I'd put it in the calculator if I have one that does parentheses. Um, if you have a, a less sophisticated calculator, you'll have to do each piece a little bit. You know, I'd, I would do all the inside parentheses stuff first and then take the arc cosine when I'm all done. Okay, so I get angle A is about 34 degrees. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and use the law of sines because it's a little bit less work. So sine of 34 over A is equal to, and I could have done B or C, I'm going to do B, sine of B over 4. We're going to multiply both sides by 4 and then take the arc sine. Okay, so 4 over 8 is going to reduce to 1 half, so you just get a 2 in the denominator. So arc sine of sine of 34 degrees is about 16.2 um, degrees. Alright, now angle sum of a triangle is 180. So we're going to go ahead and uh, subtract angle A and angle B to find that angle C, which is about... 129.8, okay? And that is solving by law of cosines. So I would say that the law of cosines in general are, are probably a little bit easier to solve for just because you don't have that ambiguous case to check for when you do the law of sides. Uh, common errors are just, you know, putting it into your calculator. So, you know, you might want to check with me um, or, you know, go to tutoring or something like that if you're having an issue with putting it into your calculator. Um, and then the more work you, can, you show, the, the more in terms of partial credit that I, I can award. So uh, take your time, and uh, th they're not real difficult. You just got to identify, okay, it's not a right triangle. And then when, if, do I know angle, side, angle, side, side, angle? That'd be a law of sines. If I know side, angle, side, or side, 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 that'd be law of cosines. And then in the process of solving using the law of, of uh, cosines, sometimes it's, it's easier to use the law of sines to, to, to finish it off.